Hi guys, it's Big Daddy D from Harp and Herf Gaming here with uh, a new and creative adventure mode from Minecraft. Uh, I'm just going to let everyone know that uh, I'll be using the Alcritty kind of custom texture feature uh, adds a little bit of realism to or the basically the look of the world that I'm going to be building. Uh, in the premise of this world is based on um, a D&D campaign that I've started, uh, one of my own um, homebrew world settings called Lakona. And in this kind of home world, it, it deals with the idea of what happened if a 20th level character uh, went to and somehow managed to land on a primitive land and how they would affect uh, the local populace and everyone that's living there. Um, this, of course, it was based on playing through uh, original Minecraft in Bedrock Edition, playing with some friends and family here. Um, you know, you're all walking around with diamond gear. You know, you can build things, you can craft things and make magic potions. And meanwhile, you have the local residents, the natives of this world, uh, the villagers just kind of, you know, at your mercy, more or less. So you can, you know, be good and help them build and defend or you can be evil and just like steal all of their beds and wreck their towns. So that was the premise of a game, as I said, a D and D campaign that I've developed. Um, but now I am playing. Uh, I found this really cool texture pack uh, called Alacrity uh, that I'm going to be using to kind of simulate what happened. Uh, during this time and uh, it's kind of a creative process so we'll jump right in here uh, of course there was five known characters in my homebrew that landed all at the same time basically the are people that uh, native Asgardians escaping or trying to escape Ragnarok, uh, the destruction of the home world, uh, you know, in the multiverse. Uh, if you're familiar with Marvel, you've seen it um, through Thor and the Infinity War uh, when it was destroyed. Um, but more or less, uh, Soldier uh, comes to life and basically destroys everything, destroys the world. Um, in this setting, these high uh, level characters, you know, would be between the levels 18 and 20th, use a wish spell to protect themselves and find safety, uh, you know, and not knowing what would happen. Uh, through the wish spell, they were actually transported to another multiverse, which just ended up being a very primitive and uncivilized land. Um, not unlike Asgard uh, in the beginning, and but they're separated, and to the the five heroes, you know, will have to link up at some point. Uh, but we're playing from the point of view of Arturo. Arturo was a dwarf, uh, and he was also a great architect and a great warrior uh, in the group. And uh, this is kind of like my reimagining of Arturo landing in this new land uh, that he dubs Lakona. And kind of, I'm gonna walk through it as it happens. So I'm um, just gonna link up and then, like I said, um, I'll just give you the narrative as it goes through. So, you know, he lands on this high kind of hill top and it's a clear skies and uh, you know he's a little dis disoriented at first but then he realized hey wherever i am the world's not blowing up he has all his gears so he would have all his diamond tools and he immediately uh starts uh, scavenging and foraging um maybe inter multi dimension travel makes you really hungry 
Uh, immediately chops up some pumpkins, goes after ship's sheep, kills a cow. He recognizes these animals. They're not, like, foreign to him. Uh, he knows pig uh, is worth meat. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of like, oh, well, maybe it worked. Maybe it's just succeeded. Maybe they've gone in the past. He really doesn't know. He's not the, the greatest thinker of the group. But uh, in this playthrough, um, you know, I'm exploring. And, uh, you know, ultimately, food, shelter, water, those are the necessities of life and he immediately comes to this huge ravine uh that just you know it's just this huge hole in the ground that just goes on forever which is somewhat imposing but also uh, as a great builder that could make a really awesome multi-level base so you know getting his his bearings around him um he's just going around and making a complete circle around that uh, keeping that logistically in his mind you know he sees horses horses are of some value it's great it sees this vast ocean that just goes out for who knows as far as i can see uh, to the horizon but the horses will be good because you can tame them and use them to traverse across land um so he's you know looking he immediately sees minerals and his little dwarven eyes, dwarves love mining and they love getting things out of the earth. And an affinity for stone. Uh, so immediately says, okay, I recognize that looks like coal deposits. Uh, and the funny thing is, using this texture pack for the first time, they changed what the icons look like. So that's great for me because I'll have just as much of. I think it's coal, but it might not be coal, right? So I have no idea what the different minerals that I get out of the ground are actually going to look like. Much like I would presume Arcturo would be like, if that looks like coal, I should get over there and see if it is. Because then you can, uh, you know, mine it and see what it is. And even the dirt, you can see like the little closets. It almost looks like clay, the texture on it. It's pretty cool. Um, so he starts immediately digging in. This is probably a, a good first start. Uh, getting some shelters, getting some protection. Uh, you know, it looks like a friendly, inviting world, but you just never know what uh, what dangers look uh, when night falls. Um, you know, he's been around the block for a while. He's roughly, I would say, about 200 years old uh, in DP terms and border terms. So he knows that you know, looks may be deceiving. This looks like a fairly peaceful and cozy, you know, lots of abundance of food. Oh, look, and he finds his first deposit, and it just happens to be copper. You know, uh, the boarders know that copper deposits typically are near the surface. I uh, also probably immediately, once he acquires the, you know, uh, the Minecraft mechanic where you don't actually have a recipe for something, I like that mechanic, because as soon as he gets the copper, it's his mind racing, like, okay, I have found copper, what can I do with this copper? So you're unlocking these kind of things. Uh, as he encounters these different resources, he's immediately going through his head and saying, hey, what can I do with these? Uh, remind me, because he would have that information just based on his age and experience uh, as a dwarf. Um, so... As you can see, yeah, have a great, uh, whew, that's a long drop. Um, great starting location. The second thing is um, shoring up. Now, you don't want to fall to your death, especially at dark, uh, assuming that the sun does go down in this world. So probably the next thing uh, is make a landmark. You want to make a landmark so you can... Uh, say, hey, where, where did I start? Where did I dig at? Um, maybe possibly, in this case, you see some trees finally in the distance. Looks like open plains to me. Lots of flatlands. Um, yeah, let's go get some wood. Wood is always good. You can make a lot of things with that. And, you know, you're not in a forest, so wood is going to be somewhat scarce. See, there's no more wood here. Breaking branches for no reason. Uh, 
uh, won't be able to collect that until you get shears, uh, which will require some iron, uh, as you can see. Fruitless. Uh, Endeavor. Let's go. Let's get some more trees. As you can see, it's not a forest plains. So the trees are spaced out here. Let's get some wool from this sheep. I'm hitting it with a block. That happens a lot. My mouse wheel's a little bit too quick. Hey, look, I got some dye. That's it. excellent. We want to make some color changes later on. All right, level two. Let's go. Ah, see, I didn't have to go looking for you, chicken. You came to me. Let's get some more sheep. Because wool, uh, you know, see, already, time is a ticking. Look, you can see the sun is going down. So the sun does set in this world. You would know. Darkness will come. Uh, you know, it has ten torches. Very limited at this point at his disposal, so I'm going to make good use of it. Probably a good idea to head back, as you can see the sun is setting. Lots of pretty flowers and on this open plains. With all these recipe ideas, and up comes the moon! So... So far, so, so good. Fairly peaceful. You got lots of Lots of animals, they don't seem to be in danger or worried about the dark. And another mini uh, crevice, almost like a ravine. The topography of this land is, is really is quite quite interesting. Uh, look at the visual effects of the moon as the sun is going. Going down, call that the golden hour, the sun is going down at night. So, lots of animals, lots of food. That's, yeah, that's that's a deep ravine. And all Octoro realizes uh, in the darkness this creature. What was that? Uh, it gets the Monster Hunter achievement right away. Um, okay, so well, some awareness creatures are coming out in the dark. So, you, you gotta keep your wits about you. Oh, that was like, could not kill, uh, oh, what, a skeleton! Yeah, it knocked it back down. <laughs> Pushed it. It maybe did the sparter kick and just knocked it off the ledge. Let's get out of there. Alright, so this is, this is becoming, she's three of the zombie-like creatures racing towards them. Probably looking for shelter, like, let's get back in our base. Don't want to be overwhelmed. Here's the problem. Normally I make towers, just so you can point out different locations, because looks like right now he's, he's searching, okay, he's searching for the hole, Found it, and you can see there in the distance the the mini base that he started. He just has to get there, and it looks like uh, these zombies have doubled back. He's gonna have to fight them off. Oh, they're coming in, coming in droves. You gotta be defensive about it. No problem for a seasoned. But see, the problem is no problem for a seasoned fighter like our Turo. But the problem is they'll overwhelm you in numbers and dwindle your health down. Oh, excellent. Yes, he picked up an iron piece. They dropped some iron. So maybe they're like goblins in the fact that they hoard little treasures. So yeah, now's a good time to kind of built these pillars to say, hey, this is where my entrance is. I'm gonna... Yeah, I don't know how tall he's gonna make it. Make it so far enough that he can hop down. Got a nice little stack of dirt that he's collected already. So probably... Five or six blocks high? And what the heck is that thing over there? Never seen anything like that. Looks 
yeah, he just sees all of these creatures out at night and he's gonna nope out. Let's see here. There we go. We have lit. It's like Gondor. We have litter, litter beacons. So we'll know where our base is in case we have to run to safety in the darkness. That's quite dark here. Oh, he's making use of those torches that he started with. Gonna block it off, wall it off. That's a good way. Keep anyone from coming in. Get some logs here. Should be able to start fortifying the entrance of this base. It's a good first start. Now, in the lore of the world, Arcturo has a pickaxe, because he is a miner by trade. Um, but his pickaxe, um, whenever it breaks, it automatically repairs itself. So it's basically an invincible pickaxe. Mechanically speaking, uh, I probably could have put a an enchantment on the axe, but I didn't want to do with that, so uh, mechanically speaking for this world, whenever the axe breaks, I'll just, in my mind, I'm just going to replace it. It's a diamond pickaxe that he, he never loses. Everything else, all the other gear can get worn down, can break. You're going to need repairs or replacements, uh, but except his pickaxe. Um, and, and that's, of course, because Natera, who is the the wizard that was in the party, the one that cast the ninth level wish spell, uh, would have been enchanted for him. Uh, you know, every party member has some sort of various forms of enchantment uh, that was given as gifts from Natera. All right, so he uh... things are coming back. You need chests for storage, you need a bed for sleeping, you need a workbench to start building things, and you have all these raw materials. Already looks like he could do some baking if he wanted to, or, or start gardening. But, uh, you know, I don't see Arcturo as being the one with the green thumb in the party. less concerned with baking and gardening and growing things as he is <laughs> mining in the earth. So he probably won't have an anything to do with those for the time being. Should probably be a good idea to do a point of view of each of the heroes as they land separately. To see what they they do. That would be a, a very interesting point of view. I'm also getting used to the controls of playing on a PC coming from Bedrock playing on PS4. Um, a long time ago, I played on played a couple games in Java on PC, but was mostly a console player, so getting used to clicking and navigating the screen. Of course there's rain, so that's good. This environment rains, that means you have a, a, a source of water, which is important. Uh, yeah, going for the furnaces, always important to cook that food. Now, unfortunately, no way to cook it though. Need some coal. So that will be something that will be a necessity. Yeah. All that raw food, ew, in the rotten flesh. <laughs> Don't eat it unless you're absolutely necessary. But I, I mean. You have pumpkins and potatoes. You, there's more, lots of food there that you can eat. You're certainly in no rush. Yeah, that's smart. 
Get it out of your uh, inventory. Have it close to the smoker so you can cook it uh, once you obtain some coal. Actually, doing pretty good food wise in this location. You know, to, to have access to like eggs and potatoes and pumpkins and like meat. Oh, yeah, and that iron. That unlocked a bunch of recipes getting that iron drop. Some leather. Okay, so. <laughs> no, you're not, you're not, not eating the pumpkin. Smash that up. Alright, well. You can only sleep at night or in thunderstorms. So it is day. So one day has passed. It looks like today's day is going to be rain. So it's not going to be nice. So a good day to mine indoors or underground. goes the smoker. Here we go. And of course you're gonna have to have your counters for cooking. Uh, yeah. Planks. Planks will do. There we go. Got a kitchen counter there. Okay, what are you doing today, Arturo? You're breaking down your makeshift barrier. It's a rainy day. Um, yeah, I need some stairs. Stairs are good. Get them in there so you in case to make a, a hasty retreat to your base. Not his first rodeo. That huge pit, it just like goes down. Who knows what how far down to the earth it goes. Just in case you're running for your life and it starts and you're out of churches. I mean, you are down to five. Let's play safe. Alright. Probably wouldn't take too long to, uh, even that. You just gotta, you just gotta be careful. There's like, it's like pockmark. Wrong turn or dig too far, and you're splatted. Don't want to get into the hell. Folks are wondering what you're doing.
Don't want to dig too far past. Okay, yeah. Just as I suspected. Uh, dug past the, the hole, so they're not digging a straight line forever. Let's get a barricade up. All the way around. Careful, man. <laughs> Makes me nervous. Alright, all right, as you can see, the initial base isn't that many blocks down from the surface. The idea of having this cool base around the perimeter that slowly goes lower and lower it descends. you have in a button um, always makes you nervous because like any creature for that matter just, like jump down and jump on you out in the rain. Very good time. It's always good. <laughs> always good to double check. Right? Especially if, oh my goodness, a creeper coming up when you're this close to the edge, it could probably blow you right off. Blow you right off the side.
yet. The sun is setting. Time is ticking. We're nearly done. You gotta stay, stay frosty, as they say. Keep your wits about you. Maybe add, that's more reinforcement in case a uh, creeper blows up. It's a good start. Managed to get a ton of flowers though. So those could be definitely useful in making dyes. Day three is going to be trying to reach some coal so we can make some more torches and cook that food. Fortunately, let's see. It's got to make a tunnel over. Barricaded soon. <laughs> One of those green guys. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh. He. <laughs> Un well, at least he learned about them. Okay, those green things explode themselves and make a massive hole. Took a. 
two and a half hearts of damage. You know, he's got he's got fairly good armor. So yeah, okay. <laughs> I hope you're not scared of heights. That's that's a long ways down. Long ways. All right. We got cold air. <laughs> it blew up the sheep. R.I.P. Sheep. That sheep was blown up by the blow-up creeper. You know, which actually helped. Because we're building our way over there anyways. Okay, okay. We're just gonna... Go ahead, yeah. I like the the rough hewn stone. As much as I like the the colors of the natural stone, it's so hard to keep things natural looking once you accidentally hit a block. Um, so you might as well just go the rough hewn stone. You know, he is a dwarf after all. Working with stone is inherent to their, you know, their culture. It's like you're reforming. There you go. I like the, the, the floating mechanics. You could technically just have, like, a bunk bed that's, like, hanging off the wall there if you wanted to. So looking up and seeing that, you know, there's obviously a hole down here now. That's how that creature got down here, presumably chasing after the sheep. Don't want that to happen again, or anything else falling on you from above, like a spider or a zombie. Yeah, so it makes natural sense. We've got lots of, lots of dirt just to kind of wall it off. We got like a natural entrance way now to our base and we have a lot of you know one of the things in survivor mode is collecting the resources you need to build and continue on a little bit nervous about the fact that there's only two torches left we'll have to make them last but fortunately i don't really have to go anywhere is where you know they have to it has to be lit continuously so you can like plant it and then move it. Okay, yeah, this is something I do a lot. I like to square off my edges. <laughs> it looks a little bit nicer and a little bit neater. And I imagine a, a dwarf would uh, think the same. Yeah, look at that, like you gotta square those off. You can't leave it on a heated stone like that, yeah. <laughs> Make it all flush. Oh no, you went too far. Now you have a hole. Oh, just wait until the wars discover concrete. Alright, now that we got this kind of squared away, we 
continue our walkway. There you go. A nice raised walkway. Now this walkway is going to skirt the edge of this mountain here. a railing of dirt because you don't want to accidentally fall. So let's uh burning daylight. looks much better. <laughs> Using a shovel. Yeah, it's not going to break break the stone very easily. So it's like an even mixture of stone and dirt this high up. There we go. Get our allotted height. And we can just chip away at it, work our way over there to that coal deposit. Definitely feel that Arturo in this moment will be getting excited at the thrill of the hunt. For any sort of rare stone or minerals that they can pull out of the ground. All in a day's work. Level 5. Haven't had much chance to get XP. Um, that'll come as you start digging out the other minerals. And like, you know, from, from a setting point of view, even though technically this character D&D setting. I'll cheat the Minecraft crafting levels. This is kind of like the new world for obviously having a chance to uh, enchant items. So it's getting dark and with those two torches I'm pretty sure just to keep the creatures at bay. It'll be easier to uh, just sleep for the night. You know, day two, actually. Pretty good progression so far. Well, that was day three, so this is day four. I'm getting ahead of myself. So, four days in this new land. Health is doing good. 
and you know as a dwarf you're just happy to be able to be mining you know you have a sense of purpose you don't know where your friends are at or even if they made it so he's just visiting himself you know, building a base oh even better not even at his destination and he has found some coal deposits that's so exciting even as a player it's rewarding just like getting that coal out of the ground there we go some xp coming our way new recipes being unlocked Finally, we can make some more torches. Ah, so we can, we got some coal, we can cook some meat now. Have a nice hot meal. Although I haven't seen him eat anything. About four days without food. And the cool thing is like, if you think about it in, in a, a setting point of view, doors when mining would be following veins. So the one thing that Minecraft can really replicate well is these mine shafts and how they would snake their way underground as the doors that were mining them were chasing after these veins. You know, they just kind of sporadically, it's not like, well, some people will mine in a straight, straight direction, but typically you're, you're, you're following the vein if you find some metal. Nice little alcove. Okay, girl, what are you thinking? Okay. Let's make it nice. This is a nice little alcove. Let's do something nice here. Sure, why not? You deserve it. You know you're gonna eat well. You're gonna cook some meat. Uh, there we go. The classic. Let's see, that's like a signature look for me. Actually, the contrast between the, the cobblestone and the natural stone, it looks really nice with this texture pack. Get some dirt. Are you gonna grow a garden? I mean, I guess he has some flowers, yeah. Right on. Got lots of colors too. Got yellows and blues and whites. You got some red in there too. Actually just one red. nice. A nice little alcove filled with flowers. <laughs> All yellow. There we go. Pretty. Level six and get that coal going. Only seventeen. Not a lot. Who 
Food's in the chest. Food's in the chest. <laughs> I had to forget where did I put that food. Yeah, we got lots of raw food. Raw chicken, raw pork chop, mutton, steak. That's right, you got a smoker. Smoker cooks meats faster. Should have put the mutton in the smoker. It's look how fast it's going. It's going to cook up real fast. Alright, torches? How about some torches? Alright, inventory management. chickens. Go ahead, have some food. <laughs> there you go, that hit the spot. No longer hungry. I do believe the mutton is done. Oh, it's very smart. I'm gonna use the coal to make charcoal. Charcoal to cook more logs, and then yeah, you get the freaking oil. It's not that funny. So you can make it as long as you have access to wood. Very cool. Hey, let's put those seeds away. Yeah, old habits. You don't wanna you don't wanna have all your food with you and then die and then lose your inventory. Learn that the hard way.
probably looking to make torches, but that's from the character menu, not from the workbench. <laughs> You'll figure it out eventually. <laughs> Cue the Jeopardy music. I was going to say, you're going to have to remember how to make torches. <laughs> you use your last torch to make that lantern. Yeah, and that's uh, that's the end of day five. Have to pull. Gonna have to look and make some more torches and continue digging out. As you can see, we're very close to that that ore deposit, just off in the distance. But that's gonna be for another episode. It's a lot for listening to me and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video.